morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy um, Friday. Happy, happy Friday. Friday. Yeah, and if you're just joining us, um, we do our we do a uh, chat every Friday about conscious entrepreneurship, female entrepreneurship, and just like entrepreneurship in general. So we're excited about joining you this Friday. And today our topic is how to keep your spark, and just talking about like the ups and downs of what that is. And I have definitely something to start us off as a reframe um, when we are ready. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so keeping your creative spark alive is our topic for today, definitely. Um, yeah, I felt like, um, you know, it's just in today's society with, you know, social media, with like media in general, news, with everything that's going on, it's sometimes hard to like, you know, keep inspired, like stay, stay inspired, like keep that spark alive within you to keep like doing what you love to keep like creating new and innovative things. And I think like a lot of the time when we're so wrapped up in like, you know, um, external things like what's happening on the news or reality or what our friends are doing or this person is doing or what this person is saying or A, B or C, it's like, that just pulls us more and more away from presence. And I think that presence and creativity <laughs> like align, coexist, and connect, you know? Um, and that when we're present and when we take time to really just like go within, um, we can find that creative spark again. So yeah, I want, we wanna share some like, you know, individual experiences um, that we've had with creative blocks and moving through them, um, as well as like just giving some tips for you guys to keep your creative spark alive. Yeah, um, and then wrap it, you know what? So one of so I'll kind of like go with the reframe just in case like someone I wouldn't want anybody to miss that and then also I'll drop into kind of um, a little bit about my book and how I ended up you know making it happen yeah um, but you know the first thing actually Brett I was I was thinking about this um, right before when this morning when you were telling me when we were talking about the topic and um, as I was like grabbing my water for like <laughs> the day <laughs> this morning and making breakfast I realized um, a, another coach of mine had talked about just like our, our frequency of happiness, right? Like we have a frequency of happiness and then there's just like resistance around that. So what I thought about actually for this topic is like how to keep your spark. Um, what's scary is like trying to like live on, on this spark or like chase the spark or yeah. like keep it alive and like I don't know, even like imaginary in my head, I think about it as a flame and just like, oh my God, how do I keep it going? How do I like, just like make sure that it's still like going? Yes. You know what? I had like something really profound um, come to me, Brett. And it's, you know what? It actually isn't something that we have to necessarily like figure out how to like keep alive. No. It's That's actually absolutely. like, yeah, it's actually our being and it's like sparking and it sparks and it shines and it's beautiful. But what's, what sometimes hides it is all of our resistance. Exactly. And like resistance and negativity are also uh, almost like one in the same yeah. most of the time. Yeah. And I think that what you said is so valid because we get caught on this like, you know, it's not so much like a capitalistic conveyor belt, but it's like this creativity conveyor belt, like, oh, but I need to produce this because what are, what are these people going to think? If I, what is my audience going to think if I don't, you know, produce like this quickly or if I don't like follow the Instagram algorithm or if I don't right. post like every day at this time or whatever. Right. And then you get stuff on this other like track that's not authentic, that's not right. just like being which is the essence of what creativity is because creativity is flow like it's not forced it's not contrived it's not right. on a schedule yeah. and I think that the more that we pull away from that and are really like all right let me take time and like breathe let me meditate let me go within and let me find my flow that's that's external from the flow of like the world the flow of what everyone else is doing because that's that's what pure creativity is right it's unique right. Right. And I love what you're saying, just like about, first of all, the presence, like getting us back there. And then what's actually drawing us away is like all of these other things, like the, the energy of trying, the other energy of forcing, the other energy of like just trying to figure it out. And there's a part of learning, right? There's a, there's a process, but one process is learning and going towards and creating out of love, out of faith, out of like, wow, or out of just exploration or fun. 
as opposed to like creating out of force out of like, Oh my God, I got to get this done. Um, people are not like, I'm not going to be seen as valid if this is not done. My success is depending on this thing. Or if I'm not successful, it means something about me, all of those, the different energy. So when we're talking about the spark, like, it actually made me feel so relieved thinking like, Oh, wow, actually, we already have it. And looking at what is it that's the resistance around it, you, you talked about like negativity. Um, but resistance can be showing in all kinds of form. It's just like everything that comes in between of our belief that that would happen. Actually. And it's our true nature, you know, and I think that we like forget that especially when we're too um connected to just like external things and i think that that can be just like being too attached to anything external whether it's just like watching too much tv um just like being too connected with like what's happening just in your circle of friends or drama or this or that you know and i think that when we really take time to realize you know what i'm like i'm born with a creative spark like a creative spark is my essence like creative yeah. flow is my essence like you don't have to like um manipulate or do like egoic you know things to try to like make it happen like it right. is you and like when you sit in that now moment and you're really like embrace the here and the now and like breathe into that i think that you tap back in to that you know innate power that we all have but it can be so covered up by like the world by what you know this person said or how th that person might have made you feel insecure like you can't do it or like and i think it's a lot of um like you were saying negativity can really cover up and like just just like kind of rain on the parade of that like creative spark you know yeah um so if you're just joining us hi Crystal. um if you're just joining us we're talking about keeping your spark and we were talking about the difference of like chasing the spark that's actually already there and realizing that actually we are just we're already it and what's blocking sometimes and like what's dimming is like all the things that are coming um, over it. It's actually all the things that are covering um, what we think is possible. It's also all the things that we're holding on to that is not serving us. So it's more about how much you can let go yep. than how much you can just pile on and try to chase and try to figure it all out. Yep. So and um, go ahead, go ahead. Um, one of the major things that I look at is um which is like the first chapter of my book which i'll talk about in my book as well but um is forgiveness now it could be so hard obviously but harboring forgiveness and um i've said this a couple of times one of the my favorite lines is by joyce meyer she's like unforgiveness is like drinking poison and hoping your enemy would die yep so it actually is just harboring so much in your inside of yourself than anything else so it's just like taking a look and you know, that's one example, taking a look at energies around you that's not serving you. Yeah. And it could be exactly like coming from yourself. You know, what's the disempowering thoughts, disempowering conversations, all of those things. And that's what's actually dimming your light. Because like, let's say it's someone else. We think it's someone else, right? Um, they did something to hurt us, you know? Um, they betrayed us in business. They lied, right? right? Now, how much of our suffering that happens because of their lie is actually what we're accountable for? Right. Because it's always us, you know, how we want to feel, how, how we're responding. It's always us. Like, what, right. what is happening to us, what we're bringing in, it's right. always us. But a lot of the time, like, you know, we're not conscious of that fact. And we have right. to, like, tap in to our true innate power to remember that. And you were saying earlier, like, just that, you know, you were you started your day and drinking water and whatever. But like, I think that sometimes when we take a step back and like detox and, and drink water and eat healthy and like maybe unplug and get some time in the sunshine, spend some time alone. It's like, then you tap back in to that true essence that's like, ne you're never really without. You're never really without that, you know, creativity that is deep within. Even if you don't feel like a creative person, technically, it's there. But it's like society, people, opinions, perception, you know, projections can like just weigh on you and they like can just cause like dust and dirt to kind of like just, you know, layer on your true essence, your true nature. Exactly. Um, 
experiences that we've been experiences. through. Experiences, yeah. So um, I know one, one topic we we're going to talk about, especially with me writing my book. Um, so my, my book writing process, I would say, took about two years um, in between that time I got pregnant and so on. But um, honestly, the amount of time that it took me to write my book was probably about two and a half months. And um, it's cool for me to come, you know, come back to that because, you know, um, in the beginning, I was like, oh, I have to gather all of this information, gather, gather, gather. And it was just a process, you know? Yeah. But then when I really look at it, it's just like, actually, when I finally decided that, you know what, I am going to write this book, it literally took me two months, you know, a couple yeah. of weeks. And... And if I um, really say like the amount of writing time was like hours, you know, it's, it's not, it wasn't like 5,000 ho hours. It actually right. didn't even take that long. It was right. like two hours a day focus for like two weeks. Right. And the thing is, you know, when we decide on something, it just like changes everything. Right. And yeah, um, make a decision, you know, yeah, making a decision, making a decision. And then also going in faith, like, okay, like I just decided that I was going to write it and I knew that, okay, I'm going to get it done. So I was in the energy of like, it's going to happen rather than yeah. like, how is this going to happen? I don't yeah. know if this is going to happen. I got to keep on researching. I got to yeah. keep on pulling from here. And you know what? Everybody has their own process. Yeah. So and their own not way, way. what I went through, but really just coming back to the point of, Wow, you know what? It was always there. I I gathered all these notes and I hardly looked at any of them when I yeah. was writing. It was actually just starting to flow. It was actually just flowing. Exactly. And because sometimes um, when you're in that creative zone, when you're in that now moment, like you said, like sometimes things just align and things just happen and align and flow better than they could ever, you know, align or flow. Like when you're just like pushing and forcing things to be done or, you know, have this like rigid um, ending, you know, perception in your mind mm -hmm. of it. It's like when you let go and you just start flowing with it and you're just in the now, here and now, like one task at a time, one thing at a time. Let me just do this, be, be in this moment create this and move to the next like things start to you you're in that flow you're in flow yeah it makes total sense also just even what you're saying right now is just like the surrender part the trust the yes that's um, key surrender uh, allowing the flow because like it actually can when you're in the energy of like forcing and controlling you want you want things to be a certain outcome and I mean, we could have goals, like that's totally different. We're not talking about goals. Like we have an outcome that we want. Yes, a desire. But if we're yeah. so attached to how it manifests itself, then we're so limited because actually the universe, God, people cannot have, like we don't have access to the same, you know, thinking, let's say, you know, we're talking about the cosmic um, ability of the universe. So we can actually like count ourselves out of our own, blessings out of our own yes. life, out of our own things because we're so limited to what we think is possible but actually what's possible with our being is so much more so there's an opportunity for it to be better better than yes and like you know there's always divine timing right and like while in our minds and while our egos often want things to happen like you know in a in a certain like box in a certain time frame box like i'm sure you wanted your book to be done in this specific time frame but sometimes, you know, like life just doesn't work like that. And yeah. I think that when we give that grace and then when we give ourselves grace to just flow instead of being like, well, I need to do it here and now and at this time and, you know, on this timeline, um, then it's like we allow the universe to surprise us. We allow like more openings to happen. We allow more um, good to inevitably just like flow in. Um, and I was going to say, like, for me, just like in creating art collections, um, as I've created, like I've created an art collection for stuck, but then, you know, I have my own personal art collections. And a lot of the time when I'm just like posting, you know, art on um, social media or whatever, it, I sometimes I'll get into the flow of like, am I posting this just so 
you know, other people will see it or just so like, I'll get that feedback or, you know, and I'll get stuck in that cycle. And a lot of the times it's just necessary for me to pull myself away and pull myself out of that to really create from a genuine and authentic place that doesn't look like anyone else's and that doesn't feel like anyone else's flow. Because I think that if we don't do that, if we don't take time to like, you know, go within to pull ourselves back into ourselves, then, you know, we're, we're never really going to create like, true, raw, authentic, unique art, like, otherwise, it's just going to be like mirrors of, of everyone else. But when we take time to turn away and to pull within, it's like, we're getting, you know, visions and insight from the universe from things around uh, only uniquely to us, like, because we are, are each one of one, you know, yeah. um, but like, we really then open up things and open channels, like for us to be able to receive like unique gifts that only we can, you know, receive. Yes. 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 <laughs> um, yeah, yes. Love that story. And, um, and yeah, I feel like that brings it all together. I know we're gonna hop off I'm gonna hop off for a call. But um, I have one closing yeah, little card sure, sure. that I pulled um, from my affirmations deck. And um, it is randomly I just pulled this but it is harmony. And it says, I know my heart um, that I know, sorry, I know in my heart that when something is right, it feels easy and breezy, even though that sounds cheesy. With this in mind, I banish all stress, insecurity, and tedious work from my relationships. Then I invite harmonious relationships into my life and let them show up on their own time. Easy, breezy things are rarely punctual. Ooh, that's like really just good. what we we're talking about. Yeah, really good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I okay. hope you guys all have a fantastic Friday. And yeah, flow, you know, don't be afraid to unplug and just like take time to breathe and really just be present and tap into your unique, authentic creativity today. Yeah, beautiful. Have a great rest of the day. We'll see you again next week. And Brett, I'll call you a little bit later. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Okay, bye.